Hello everybody, it's Christine at CL Aldridge Art. How, uh, thank you very much for joining me today. If you are new here, my name is Christine Aldridge. I am an artist. I do draw my own line of coloring books. Uh, however, this uh, particular image is uh, from my Sunday show, once a week on Sundays, uh, or once a week, once a month on my the last Sunday of the month, I do a guest artist spot. And this month, uh, I decided to color in Nadia Vasilkova's book, Magic Dreams. Uh, it was my second time using Cali Art Markers, and I began working on this image. I have worked on it a little bit uh, after the show ended, and uh, I'm going to continue working on it uh, this session as well. Uh, just to show you some of the very cool things that you can do with markers. Uh, but before we do that, I want to uh, set this aside for a second to show you something amazing. Um, this arrived in my studio. As many of you know, I have uh, been kind of going nuts over a acrylic pour artist that I discovered here on YouTube. Her name is Fiona Art. Fiona uh, was kind enough to attend a couple of my streams and um, contacted me uh, when she found out that I would very much like to own a piece of her art. And uh, guys, look at what she sent me. It, uh, it doesn't really matter which way you show it. It is just simply gorgeous. I do believe that it, it's intended to go this way. Uh, this is uh, a piece of her art. It is absolutely every single bit as gorgeous uh, as I knew it would be. And um, hang on just a second. I'm going to zoom you down so you can see what I am talking about. Look at how, look at the gold in there and the colors and just how absolutely incredible this is. It's just every one that she does is unique. Um, it, it, her process is amazing uh, to watch her first pour it and then use uh, her various experiments to lift the paint uh, into these incredible shapes and uh, and and then blow them out with a straw or um, it's it's just, I just cannot recommend her channel highly enough to those who uh, who love beautiful art now um, Fiona was kind enough of course it is signed on the back which I love and uh, this is of course her contact information and I will be putting that uh, in uh, but below there are links to her channel uh, to her Facebook page and above all to her um, gallery and store where you can choose to own one of these uh, I will say that her artwork moves very quickly from uh, entry to the store to sold. So if you see a piece that you like, please get it then because the chances are likely going to be that it won't be there <coughs> if you go back uh, to get it. Now, uh, Fiona does live in Slovenia. Uh, this was shipped beautifully uh, in a protected box wrapped in the bubble wrap. Uh, it arrived very quickly. And um, I just, it's just amazing. Uh, I do believe that a piece this size runs about 20 euros, uh, which is, I think, around 25 to $27 uh, US right now with the exchange rate. And it is just simply amazing. Just amazing. And I think everybody should own one of these. Um, Fiona, thank you so, 
very, very much. This will have a very proud place uh, here in my studio where I can see it every single day. Um, and of course, she, uh, she's got tons and tons of videos uh, on how she does this. And I encourage everybody to go to her channel and watch. And look at the beautiful cards that she then is able to make uh, from her her paintings. And, you know, she does, she uses the skins that are left over. Yeah, if you do acrylic pouring, you know what skins are. Uh, this is just absolutely incredible. And yes, everybody, I did send her a selection of my books as well. <laughs> okay. Um... If you would like to follow me on social media, you can certainly do that. Uh, these are, in fact, my uh, social media addresses. If you've got the C.L. Aldridge art board, you can always find me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Twitter will come up here in just a second. There it is. Okay. Um... So, let's talk about our horse. And once again, this is uh, Nadia Vasilkovich. This is not me. Uh, my books look like this. Uh, the two most recent ones are my 40 fan favorites. Uh, and this is a sampler of five drawings each from my first eight books, which are here uh, with some featured colorings on the back cover and uh, these are some of the ones that I have colored so far in the book and just sort of doing a quick flip through for those who are familiar with my art uh, these are not unknown to you this is uh, uh, that was a an epic veil experiment <coughs> that we did, but uh, then there's also uh, the Best of C.L. Aldridge Art Mandalas, and uh, this is just exactly what it says it is. It is the various mandalas that I've drawn over the years, and um, uh, there are a couple in here that I've finished. Uh, There is one, did that one with Prismacolor pencils. Um, this one is our, our uh, Prismacolor uh, color palette experiment that I did when I, uh, uh, I did a video about how I um, <laughs> sorted my Prismacolors into a uh, numeric sequence and discovered that it was, that there were hidden color palettes. Uh, this is the one. This was the first time that I used these brand new Cali Art markers. And um, so this was my first drawing that I colored with those. And I also used uh, Zier glitter gel pens or gel paint for the uh, embellishments. This one is watercolor. And so we're working on that. This one was pastels the Mungo Pastels. So those are my books. And uh, this is The Horse. Now, when we left this on Sunday, uh, I had really just added a lot of base color uh, and I had done a, a few of the uh, flowers, you know, added the various colors, but I hadn't done an awful lot of the detail work. So I wanted to talk about the detail work just a little bit. And let me see if I can get you down here so I can talk about the horse. Now, the horse um, was a lot lighter when we stopped, when we left it on Sunday. I am trying to, there it is. Uh, I used the uh, hybrid dual metallic uh, liquid gel roller pens uh, that look like this. And I used the blue one. Oops. 
Of course, it's not. There it is. Okay. I used this blue one here, uh, and I did the uh, horse's tattoos. And I really like the way that that worked out. Uh, otherwise, I just used uh, dark, you know, kept going with darker shades for the mane. Uh, and I did darken up the horse substantially. And of course, I, I made his eye much more purple, or her eye, uh, as the case may be, much more purple than it was when we left. And I was able to add a highlight um, with a, uh, with, I used, for the eye only, I used the Deli pencils and uh, the four colors that you see here. And then for uh, just the shadow under the mane and uh, the shadow under the chin and some of the shadow in, inside the ear, I use the deli pencils. Otherwise, every bit of shading that I've done so far has been with the markers. So this has virtually no pencil at all in these flowers. And, um, and I keep hearing Dee Dee Willingham's voice in my head that's saying it's all about the contrasts. It's, you know, coloring, good coloring is all about the contrasts. So you want to keep building those contrasts. Well, um, to me, markers have always been, I always thought they were clumsy. I really didn't think that markers were capable of the kind of subtlety that you can get with pencils. And as it turns out, I was wrong. Uh, it often happens when I make assumptions. <laughs> uh, having never used alcohol markers before, I did not know that you could, in fact, get the kind of subtlety that you can get with pencils using these markers. You just have to go about it very slowly. And one of the things that is the best way to show that off is to look at the back. Uh, now, when you look at the back, you can see all the different colors that I actually used in making this flower. So there is, and I, I mean, you really, the trick is, of course, to work from light to dark. Always start with your light, your highlights, um, and then keep adding the darker shades on top. Uh, you can, in fact, let your, uh, as long as you let it dry in between, you can layer forever uh, using alcohol markers. You never have to worry about uh, wax bloom or anything like that. Uh, so, especially down here in the yellows, you can see where I pulled in the browns. Uh, so far, I've only done fine detail work on these flowers up here and, of course, on the rows. So you can um, really uh, tell all the different colors that are in this particular rose. I started out, I colored the outer edges yellow, I did the inner, I just kept uh, gradually going from a very, very light flush tone, adding uh, progressively darker shades of orange, um, and then eventually getting to the brown that uh, made this just, I think, a really standout flower. Same thing is true here. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, this has got the, uh, I started out with the yellow. When I added the flush tone over the yellow, it turned it a beautiful gold. Uh, I was able to add the pinks and the oranges and ultimately the browns to uh, add in the shadows there. Here on these flowers, uh, once again, uh, you know, started out with the super, super pale, like uh, silk. Um, I think we started out with that flower. 
with like the skin white or actually I think we started with the cherry white and then went to the salmon pink and I just kept progressively adding color um, until I got exactly what I wanted and I love that I was also still able to darken up these centers uh, the, the tiny leaves around this or petals around the centers so um, same thing here just tiny little strokes uh, here on the purple and so it's you just have to keep working it I have barely begun to uh, do the final shading on the leaves uh, I started out with a very light shade I colored them all uh, this this sort of yellowy uh, anise color then I stepped it up to yellow green uh, leaving a little bit of the anise still to show kept kept it at adding bud green which is where most of these are right now uh, with adding the bud green and now I am uh, adding the 825 which is the Petty Paul, uh, Pettis Paul, Pauls. I guess phonetically it's Pettis Pauls, but it's, uh, I think it's Petty Paul, and which is a more olive green. Uh, and I have begun doing that shading uh, here. I may yet add another darker shade. Uh, I don't really know. But uh, we will know when we uh, return here in just one moment. Hello and welcome back. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to show you guys is um, <clears throat> as I continue to deepen up the shadows, uh, or the contrast um, and I'm, I just keep pulling colors um, that are slightly darker than the ones that I used before so in this case I have the tan and um, to show you uh, that color here it is this one it's the R222 in the Cali Arts um, and I've chosen it because uh, the, the primary colors in this one, in these flowers, are pinks. And so I chose this as opposed to, say, the potato, uh, because the potato is a Y uh, color, which means that it is yellow-based, and I want a red-based brown. So in this particular case, it's going to be tan. Um, so all I really do and I'm, I'm being really light with this pen and I'm just going into the darkest areas of where Nadia put in the grayscale. And it shows up kind of dark at first, but then it'll lighten up uh, as it dries. Just being very, I mean, really just like you would with a um, uh, any medium. I mean, it, these are the markers are really controllable by how much weight you put on the on the lines that you're making. So if you just are barely touching the page, you can get a lot of control. And it's just that little bit of difference that really makes the difference. Turning it just to give myself a little more reach 
This is the under portion of this leaf where it curls over here. And the fine detail work, of course, you can't really rush it. You've got to take your time with it. And, um, the, you know, with working with the grayscale, it really sort of gives you an idea of where to add the darker color. Which is why you always want to use your lights and your mediums on your grayscale so that you then have the option to drop in darker colors and you're not covering up your um, covering up your grayscale with the darker colors right from the beginning. Okay, so that'll dry and it really is just very, you know, very subtle, very uh, gentle. Not a step you want to overdo. Just sort of work it methodically. See, and we all thought that markers were so much faster. Well, they are right up until you get to this part. <laughs> Oops, I've got my phone and my book and too much stuff right over here on the side. I'm trying to keep this centered so that you can see it. Just bumping up that contrast ever so slightly. And it just makes all the difference in the world. So I was over this week, I was uh, watching uh, some of my favorite channels uh, and um, Curiosity Inc. came on live and uh, Alex has had a, um, Al uh, for those who don't know or don't follow Curiosity Inc., uh, we first sort of became aware of him when Dee Dee Willingham mentioned him. Uh, and it was because this, he's a he owns an antique store in Alberta, Canada, and he had taken in a, a an original Disney gel from um, uh, Bambi, and um, a homeless man had found it digging in a, you know, in a trash bin, brought it in. Alex didn't think it was real, but he gave the guy 20 bucks for it. Um, when he discovered that it was real and he got $3,600 for it at auction, um, he tracked, spent quite a bit of time tracking the guy down and uh, initially split the money with him and then when he found out the guy's full story, um, actually hosted a fundraiser and uh, basically um, did everything within his power to put, um, uh, uh, gosh, I don't remember his name now, um, the, the homeless man back on his feet. And it got him in a whole lot of publicity excuse me, for both him and his store. And uh, and in the interim, it also made him a YouTube star. So uh, he then, his next project was, uh, he bought a, a hoarder house, only it wasn't really a hoarder house. It was a house that belonged to an eccentric uh, artist. And uh, he brought her work back into the public eye shortly before her death at 101 years old. Um, so he's an all-around good guy. At any rate, well, 
he's had a dream to um, to be able to buy a old general store and refurbish it uh, for his store. Um, up till now, he's he owns the building that he's in, but it is uh, a uh, more like a industrial complex type uh, building. And so what he wanted was an old general store. And um, he has found one, but because he was overextended on, uh, you know, buying the hoarder house and, or the potter's house, I guess is what we call it, and uh, everything else, all the other things that he's got, you know, line of credit for his business, a mortgage on his own private home, um, the bank said no. But his karma said yes. And uh, and so he was able to and to get the store, and he's been doing videos. Uh, or he, he did a a new video about that. Now this is the CG. This is the cool gray, and this one I'm, I want to be very very careful with. Um, these are the hydrangea. And I just want to add a little bit of depth into each of these. Sort of define the petals. And just add that tiny, tiny bit of depth so that when it dries, it'll look more like this one, which is um, uh, a little more subtle. As you can see down here, I played with different colors. I was originally going to try and make these lavender or blue, uh, but in the end, I went for the pink uh, because I think it's a much better contrast in here but with the yellows, uh, especially as we get closer to this uh, blue horse. So really just sort of touching the, uh, barely touching the pen, very, very lightly. But adding just that little bit extra definition to each of these flower petals. Now this is obviously not a step that you have to take, I'm going to take it, just simply because I'm fascinated by what these markers will do. Um, and pretty much what I can get away with with them, you know? could just as easily choose to do this with a pencil, but I just want to see what, what can be done just using the markers. Yeah, see how those, those dry in very nicely. You can barely see them now. And I just wanted to show you this. Once again, not um, you know, just barely touching, just adding that ever so slight layer of color in there. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I made a note of all of the people that I, uh, I, I reread the, the t uh, chat, and so, hi Cindy888, hi Brenda Baker, hi Kimmy K, and hi Cynthia, lovely to see all of you. Those are the four people that I missed saying hello to on Sunday, so, hi, hi, thank you for coming.
Uh, okay. And I don't think I missed any questions that weren't uh, otherwise answered. So once again, not a whole lot, just a little. And, um, and looking good. I could probably even bump uh, the color on, of course this is the gray. Even just a you know that little tiny bit there, as well, um, and I could probably keep going with this, just to make sure that I don't. You don't have to do every one of them. but just enough of them to where it actually stands out. I'm not going to worry too much about that one because it's teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, but moving along to showing you the green one. Uh, now this is the G825. So it is the uh, Petty Pole. And this is the one that was my next step in uh, these particular leaves. So I wanted to, I kind of did this one already, and which is why I think that I'm going to take an even darker green after this but I'm really just using it along the you know the darkest of the the dots where uh, Nadia put in the um, the pointillism dots just to sort of add once again some visual interest to these leaves making them just a little sun dappled dappled dippled sun dippled <laughs> they're sun dippled Just being very, very subtle, very light. Just that little extra pigment, a little darker color. Brings them just a little bit more to light. And since Nadia was kind enough to put in all this shading, I think it'd be a shame not to use it. Turning over. Just working it a little bit at a time. Then, you know, let it dry, see how you like it. 
Uh, then if you want to add some more color later, you can. And it will, of course, dry lighter than it looks going down. But don't count on that, which is why you want to make sure that if you're blending markers, that you're doing it subtly. You know, you use subtle darkenings as opposed to super, you know, super contrasting darkenings because you can always add a darker color but you can't come back from the dark if you put too much Yeah, I like that a lot. I like these markers a lot. I, I love my ink tents, but I like these markers a lot. There is something very satisfying about them. Very satisfying indeed. I see, I see why people can get hooked on markers. Although, I cannot imagine that you would, you know, at least not me, would ever need more than one set of markers. And with a hundred colors to choose from in the Cali Arts, which is a great deal, and they're budget friendly, so it'd be hard to get any better than that. Once again, these are going to dry lighter, so, and these are slightly different kinds of leaves. So this one is just going to be the veins. But still using the same pen, or the same marker. Well, it's a marker pen, right? And all I'm doing here is just following the little little black dots. <coughs> okay. And then that only leaves this down here. Pushing stuff off the edge. I really liked that that glitter gel pen worked out so well on the uh, on the horse tattoos. You know, I think that's a, a really beautiful effect. And see, it dries so that it's a much nicer blend. 
that's the other thing when you're blending the darker you know over the lighter it blends much better as well And I realize that the little dots may be more difficult for you guys to see, but I can see where they are. My friend Sue is going to be so proud of me. She, <laughs> she's been trying to get me to use markers for years. Plus, they're fun. I, I think I never did this one either. Or maybe I did. And I really am just barely touching. Okay. So there is that. Now, I was thinking about doing just a few of the centers of the flowers with these glitter gel uh, pens. Now these are acrylic paint as opposed to gel pens, sorry. I meant to say uh, acrylic gel paint not gel pens and these are the ones um, that uh, Deb sent me when she sent the uh, um, coloring book and I've been swatching them as I uh, open and use each one so you can see how completely glittery they are and then these are the colors uh, without any color underneath. So they are quite pigmented. This is the yellow and the green. Uh, they have the same, they all seem to have the same sort of pearl essence uh, glitter. Uh, this is the blue. And of course I haven't opened the rest of the colors yet. But I think that the yellow is the order of the day. Since they are paint pens, you do need to shake them up every time you use them. Hello. <laughs> okay. But they are quite juicy. And they add a nice bit of bling to any picture. So I really am just doing the berry, just the, the little yellow bits. Not all over, just enough to maybe catch a little light when you... Uh,
when you turn it, you know, into the light. Yeah. Ooh. Oops. Sorry. My camera is uh, gonna gonna do that, is it? Okay. Sorry that it is seeming to stop and start. Clear off that. And see if I can't get this. To show up for you now that it is caught up. I am liking it. I do believe I'm going to zoom out. And I don't know what I want to do for a background on this. Um, let me give that some thought, and I'll be right back. Okay, well, I pretty much decided that not everything has to have a background. Um, and this may or may not get one. Uh, the real thing that is making me uh, rethink it is, is I'm not quite certain that I'm done uh, with all of the green work yet. Uh, I may yet pull one shade darker for some of these areas but uh, I haven't made that choice yet either but either way um, the next time you see this it will be uh, uh, on Instagram uh, and I will of course tag Nadia and uh, it will be actually finished um, I may do a quick pencil you know just a, a cloud a pink cloud of some kind uh, behind, uh, but for right now, uh, hopefully I have shown you, and I do have a brush for that, Not so I'm not doing it. Hopefully I've just shown you what these markers are capable of. I think as I work with them, I will get um, uh, hopefully a little bit more proficient with them, uh, but as far as I can uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself that my second run has turned out like this. So, um, pick up your Cali Arts, pick up your whatever your markers are that you have, and uh, use them, and play with them, and have fun, and uh, until we meet again, uh, color something pretty uh, in these books. <coughs> And in all of the wonderful independent artists who draw coloring books for the coloring community. Uh, until we meet again. Bye, everybody.